This is a Razer. And that is the Razer tool inside Premiere Pro. One can do some serious Gnarl McNarlstein one-hander clanders at the skate park, while to bring up the other Razer tool inside Premiere Pro, you could hit the keyboard shortcut C, and then you'd be on your way splicing up clips on the timeline faster than my knife cutting sweet potatoes for family dinner tonight. But what if I told you you didn't have to use the Razer tool? In fact, if you were to smash the like button on this video right now, like that, it'll grant you access to an even faster way of editing footage inside Premiere Pro. Even faster than you can say Tony Hawk's Premiere Pro skater with razors. For example, let me showcase to you how many steps it takes to do a simple trim edit utilizing the razor tool versus what I think are some more efficient ways to do this process. What you're looking at right now is an example of what most editors are going to face. B-roll, talking head, music. And the trim that I want to accomplish is getting rid of this bit of silence right here while covering it up with the B-roll. So using the razor tool, here's how many steps it's gonna take. Let's say I'm doing a first pass on footage and I'm playing the footage back and I notice, wow, there is a lot of silence right here that I wanna get rid of. So I'm gonna hit pause on my space bar, zoom out, hit C on the keyboard to bring up the razor tool, create my cut right here and my cut right here. I'm going to hit V to bring back my selection tool, click the clip, hit delete, lock off my music, and go up to my track select forward tool and move the clips over. Hit V to bring up my selection tool again. Click in the empty space to unselect all of the footage and then hit spacebar to continue reviewing my edit. That's 14 actions to do one trim edit utilizing this method with the razor tool. Now, if you wanna cut down on the amount of steps that it takes to do this kind of thing, I'll let you in on a little secret. Stop using the razor tool. But wait. What am I supposed to do without my beloved razor tool, Javier? I'm so glad you asked, Javier that was masked in from the future. Let me introduce to you a shortcut called Add Edit. Did you just throw away my razor? It, it, it was for dramatic effect. Um, I'll get it. By utilizing Add Edit, we're effectively going to get rid of all those steps that would require us to use the razor tool. To create a split using Add Edit instead of the Razor tool, line the playhead up where you want the split to happen. I'm going to highlight the clip that I want to split and then hit Command K. Now I have effectively created a split in just this clip. The crazy thing is I can also do this to a bunch of clips at the same time. Let's say I don't want to affect my music, so I'm still going to lock this off, but I want to create a cut in my B-roll and the talking head at the same time. So I'm going to do that same process by hitting Command K. And because my toggle track targeting is on, or this is highlighted blue, it creates a cut on both of these tracks at the same time. So with one keystroke, you've effectively eliminated all those steps that required you to use the razor tool by utilizing Add Edit. But we can make the process of trimming clips even more effective. Let me showcase to you a technique called RIP old deleting, or ripple trimming, or ripple editing. However you wanna call it, the process looks like what you see here on screen. For example, here we have an unedited raw clip, and I wanna get rid of these moments of silence. For this first part of silence, I'm gonna move the playhead where I want to cut, hit the letter Q on the keyboard, and that will delete everything from the beginning of the clip to the position of the playhead. For this middle section, I'm gonna line up the playhead where I want it to start. And instead of using the razor tool to split the clip, I'm gonna hit Command K on Mac or Control K on Windows. Now move the playhead to where you want the end part of the trim to be, hit Q, and you've effectively ripple trimmed out that part. If you want to ripple trim the end of the clip, just put the playhead where you want and hit W. One other common way to ripple delete is to split the clip at the playhead using Add Edit, hit D to select the clip underneath the playhead, and then hit the keys Shift and Delete at the same time to ripple delete everything at the playhead. By now, I hope you're seeing the potential here of how many steps we've eliminated from using the razor tool. But it gets even better. I'm not even showing you the most effective way to do something like this yet. So if you stuck with me so far, leave me a comment down below that says something like, I use the razor tool, but now I'm gonna try ripple editing or add edit for president. Let me showcase to you the most efficient way to do an edit like this. While playing back, I see that I wanna get rid of the trim. So I'm gonna hit stop on the space bar, move my playhead, hit command K, 
zoom out. Now I'm gonna hold Command on Mac or Control on Windows. That brings up the modifier key for my mouse while I'm using the selection tool. I'm gonna move the mouse a little bit over to the side of where the playhead is. That makes it this yellow arrow looking thing. I'm gonna click and drag and now I'm utilizing the ripple edit tool and it's gonna trim everything wherever I move the mouse to. Watch this. I let go and it effectively moves all of the footage. I'm just gonna move my B-roll over a little bit to cover up what I did. Hit play and right now for this edit we're at eight steps but I could even eliminate another step by going up to my preferences, trim, allow selection tool to choose roll and ripple trims without modifier key. This will effectively treat your selection tool as if the modifier key was already depressed. If you wanna go back to the way that it was before, all you'd have to do is hit Command on Mac or Control on Windows and it acts as it did before. But I actually like having my mouse this way, which effectively turns the amount of steps that you have to do into pause, add edit, click and drag, play. Thank me later. If you're going by the metric of the least amount of steps it takes for you to achieve a specific kind of edit. In this circumstance, in order to trim the footage the way that I did, that was the least amount of steps that I'm aware of. And if you really know what you're doing in Premiere Pro or you're dealing with a simpler edit, you could cut this down even further to those four steps I just showed you. If you're set in your ways and you're as fast as possible, then hey, stick to what works. But if you think that getting accustomed to editing like this when you need to trim some footage on the timeline might be faster in the long run, then I urge you to find ways to incorporate this into your editing style. And I also urge you to create your own custom keyboard shortcuts to suit this style of editing. And what I mean by that is Command-K and Shift-Delete are all over the keyboard. What I do on my keyboard, instead of using the razor tool, the add edit function is just the letter F. And that's exactly where you put your finger on the keyboard on home row. If I wanna ripple delete something, that's T, it's right above F. But that's how things work for me. I highly urge you to create your own systems where it keeps everything in a little confined space on the keyboard. This tutorial hasn't even grazed the subject of the insert and overwrite tools in Premiere Pro, which if used effectively, that means you wouldn't even have to be trimming footage on your timeline. So if you want to check out a tutorial on that that I did, it's right here on the screen. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with another person. And until next time, I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.